The iPod Touch 6th generation came out back in 2015, and I actually bought it only a couple weeks after launch. It then did not get an upgrade for 4 years, which is a long time, and this iPod has not aged particularly well, especially with battery life. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the iPod Touch 6th generation. How does it hold up 5 years later? <laughs> It's hard to believe it's been 5 years already, but here we are. I bought the iPod Touch 6 as an upgrade to my iPhone 5C back in the day, and uh, well, it actually wasn't much of an upgrade. On paper at the time, it looked pretty great to me. It had the same chipset as the iPhone 6, albeit underclocked. It was thin, it was light, it had a new gold color. I honestly thought I would like it a lot more than I did, but it did work for me and it did the job, and I did end up using it for over a year before finally upgrading to the iPhone 6. The real problem came down to battery life, which was never good in the first place, but at this point is pretty much unusable. This thing dies way too quickly, and the same darn thing happened to the 2012 iPod Touch. This iPod is actually pretty much the same as the iPod 5 in almost every single way. It looks the same on the outside besides different colors, and it does have a better camera and better speeds, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. And actually those similarities extend to the newest iPod Touch, the 7th generation that came out last year, which looks the same and just has upgraded internals. I'm actually really surprised Apple didn't just kill off the iPod line altogether in all honesty. Honesty. But they didn't, and you can still buy one today. Not this one, of course. You would buy the 7th generation iPod Touch, and that iPod is actually kind of a big upgrade, in a way. It has the A10 chipset and 1GB of RAM, making it a lot faster, and it can run iOS 13, which this one can't. This iPod is stuck on iOS 12, which is still pretty fine right now, but not the same experience as iOS 13. Of course, you could always jailbreak and get dark mode, and that's probably the biggest feature of iOS 13, but there's still more to it, and the iPod 7 definitely is an upgrade. But let's take a step back and look at the design of the iPod iPod Touch 6th generation. This is an insanely thin and light aluminum device. It has a 4 inch retina display which makes the iPod very small, same size as the iPhone 5s or SE, and there's a home button right under the display there. It doesn't have Touch ID, which isn't great but okay for 2015, especially because this was a budget oriented device. However, the iPod 7 also doesn't have Touch ID, making it the only iOS device right now that doesn't have some form of biometrics. This means you have to put in a passcode every single time you want to get into your device, so can't fault the iPod. 6 as much for that, but the iPod 7 you definitely can. At least both of these models have the headphone jack on the bottom of the device right beside the lightning port there. Holding this iPod is kind of crazy. I can't begin to explain how light and small this thing feels. You have to really hold it yourself in person. It's impressive the tech crammed in here considering the size, and while I'd prefer a bigger device to fit beefier hardware, when you take into account the purpose the iPod is supposed to serve, the small size kind of makes sense. What purpose is that you ask? Well, it's first and foremost an iPod touch. When you think iPod you might just think music, but I'd say that's clearly changed over the years, mostly thanks to the rise of streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music. At this point, and for basically the last 10 years, the iPod Touch has been best for someone who doesn't need an actual phone, a device to play games on, use iMessage, and perhaps even play music. Its compactness makes sense for the people who need that. If you have a younger child, the iPod might make sense, and if you absolutely need an iPod, the iPod Touch 7 is the one to get, but that's a video for another time. There's no reason to get this iPod anymore, used or otherwise. Wise. And if you still have one, you really should consider upgrading, not to the newest iPod, but instead I'd recommend an iPhone. I'll link my iPhone buying guide in the description below, simply because the newest iPod's going to have the same problems with the battery sooner or later, and so you might as well just make a full upgrade. If this iPod right now is being used for you as a secondary device for music, or maybe it's being used as a main device for a younger child, again, that's totally fine, I think that's pretty reasonable, but otherwise it's likely time to upgrade for you. Let's take a look at the camera. On the back here we have an 8 megapixel sensor that can take a pretty darn medium mediocre photos. The camera is definitely a weak point of this iPod, even for 2015, and you should definitely use pretty much any newer iPhone to take photos over this. In good lighting, you can get an okay or even good shot, but generally speaking, the iPod really doesn't take a great photo. Video can be shot in 1080p, and it also doesn't look very good. But hey, at least it takes video, I guess, and for some people, that's all you need. The selfie camera is 1.2 megapixels, and uh, it's just terrible. It's really bad. I mean, this is horrible. It would work for FaceTime, but if selfies are important to 
to you for some reason the iPod 6 is not the device you should get not that it's the device you should get anyways but uh yeah spec wise the iPod 6 is pretty dang mediocre with the A8 chipset underclocked compared to the iPhone 6 it also has a single gigabyte of RAM and those specs are not great which is why this thing is stuck on iOS 12 that's probably a good thing because iOS 12 actually performs pretty decently on it and iOS 13 probably would have felt slow at this point iOS 12 is still fine and you can download basically any app from the app store. This will continue to be the case for another couple years before it truly starts to become obsolete. But none of that really matters because any user of the iPod Touch 6 is eventually going to come to the worst fate of all, a terrible, horrible garbage battery life. Mix a tiny battery to begin with with years of usage and you get a device that might struggle to get more than a couple hours on a single charge. It's horrible and it makes the experience for many, if not most, unbearable. If this is a device you use in the car for music or maybe you have it in the house on a docking station, that's okay because it's being powered at all times, but trying to use it as a main driver is not going to work well. If you're looking for an upgrade from this iPod, again, avoid the newer one because you're probably going to have the same problems with the battery life, and I'd point you instead to a newer iPhone. This iPod was somewhat impressive in 2015, but it wasn't as impressive as the fifth generation iPod in 2012. This thing could have been a bigger upgrade. They could have added Touch ID at least. It's aged pretty darn badly because of the battery life, and while I really like this device because I, I personally used it for a while, there's just no way for me to say that it's held up well in the past five years, because it hasn't. And because Apple really didn't make the iPod Touch 7 a whole lot better, I'm really scared it's going to suffer the same fate. But with that, I think I'm pretty much done here. Do you still have this iPod? How's that going for you? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And with that all being said, I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.